This is the tallest road shoot that Solomon makes. But is it going to provide enough road cruising comfort to attract more Max Cushion loving runners to the brand? It's time to lace up the Solomon Aeroglide and take it for a run. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to talk about the Solomon Aeroglide. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Solomon for the purpose of review. However, no one is paying me to make this video or to use the shoe and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Solomon Aero Glide. Now, first with this brand new shoe, let's go over some specs. This is a pretty tall shoe. As far as I understand, it's the tallest road shoe that Solomon makes. It's got 37.4 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a 10 millimeter drop, giving us 27.4 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. Now in this shoe, there's nothing but Solomon's energy foam, which I believe is the same foam that's in the Sense Ride 5, which I also recently reviewed. But because there aren't giant 3.5 millimeter lugs on the outsole, instead it's just a regular rubber outsole, this shoe does come in lighter than the Sense Ride 5 at a very respectable 8.95 ounces or 254 grams. Now, even though these aren't trail lugs on the outsole of the Aeroglide, we are still seeing Solomon's Contra grip, and it's designed with a couple of interesting features. There's a slot cut across the pads of the foot that's gonna help the shoe bend a little bit more easier as you're rolling through your gait cycle, and there's also a channel down the middle of the foot, which is gonna help with making sure that the shoe rolls in a nice forward motion. There's also a very peculiar thing going on. In addition to the fact that this has a little bit more rubber than I've been used to seeing on a a lot of road shoes lately. There's a lot of rubber coverage here and it seems to be relatively thick. There's also these little like connective pieces here, almost like tabs that were supposed to be removed in the production process but weren't, but they're definitely intended to be there. There's one here right at the back of the heel and then one here on the medial side also near the heel that's kind of just like keeping different portions of this disarticulated rubber outsole together. I'm not sure if that's meant to keep the energy foam from squishing and deflecting too much or if it's just kind of like a weird design quirk. I'm not really sure what it is. As we talk about the upper, it's a very interesting upper. It feels like a very modern technical material and it is very comfortable, but it's made to look like it's a mesh. If you look at it, it looks like there's these little holes all through the upper to give it more ventilation and to make it more of a breathable shoe, but it's actually not a mesh material at all. So I find that to be kind of like a very peculiar choice, but, the looks of this upper material aside, I do feel like it performs really well and I do find it to be quite comfortable and providing a true to size fit that is a little bit more forgiving than Solomon shoes have been for me in the past and I ultimately do really like the way this upper overall performs. There's a light amount of padding on the tongue, although it looks like it's gonna be really puffy. There's not too much here and it stays out of the way. And there's a decent amount of padding in the heel cup. I feel like just the right amount for a shoe of this type in order to make sure it stays comfy and also snug for a variety of different heel shapes. All right, now that we've talked about what the specs are on this shoe, let's talk about what it's actually like to run in it. Now. First thing that I'll say is I don't think it's the most cushioned shoe I've ever run in. And I don't think that people are gonna find it to be like pillowy soft or give them a cloud-like experience. That being said, I don't think it's an uncomfortable shoe. I think it's just a touch firmer than I would like for this shoe to be for this kind of like longer run, easy run on the roads type of use case. And I think ultimately that's gonna come down to a matter of preferences. Not everyone likes for all of their shoes to be super squishy and cushioned like I do. And so for those of you who think that sometimes some of these shoes these days have been getting a little bit too squishy, a little too wobbly, 
I feel like you're gonna think that the Aeroglide midsole foam is just right. For me, whenever I got it off of the roads in concrete and onto some softer hard pack surfaces, like a dirt road or like on the shoulder on the side of the road, that's where I felt like this shoe was just right and I felt like I could just run in it for days. The shoe is still lightweight even though it is a tall stack height shoe. And I just get this kind of like, easy going up for anything kind of feel from the shoe, which is kind of like a breath of fresh air from Solomon, which to me always feels like a bit on the too serious side. So I'm liking a little bit of this kind of levity coming from the brand. Now let's get to some of my summary portions where I try to get a little bit more concise than I've been in the ramblings up till this point. I think that the Solomon Aeroglide is best for easy long runs, especially if you might encounter a mix of road and dirt road, especially if you like your shoes a little bit firmer. In terms of other shoes that you can pair it with, I think honestly, like when I think about this shoe and how it's just a little bit firmer than I'd like, I think the best shoe to pair it with from a racing perspective would be the Endorphin Pro 2. I really enjoyed that shoe, but I thought it was just a little bit too firm for me to take for the full marathon distance. But that shoe's really hard to come by these days, so let me give you some more practical shoes that I think you could pair the Aeroglide with. Another shoe that I feel like is really great, but a touch on the firmer than I'd prefer side is the Hoka Rocket X2. I feel like this is a really great carbon plated racing option that I think is going to match up preference wise to someone that really is loving the Aeroglide. And then of course, if we're gonna keep it in the Solomon family, I've already mentioned this shoe a bunch of time, the Sense Ride 5. I feel like this could be your trail shoe and this could be your kind of like every other day kind of shoe and I feel like because they have very similar fits in terms of foot shape and the similar midsole foams, I feel like these are gonna be a good one-two punch to cover you for a lot of the different kinds of terrains and weather conditions that you might encounter in any given week. Now, let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe. This shoe's brand new, so you're not gonna find it on sale anywhere, and the list price for this is 160 bucks, which again, is a lot of money to pay for a shoe, I'm not saying it's expensive or overpriced, but I do recognize that $160 is a lot. Let's compare it to some of its competitors to see kind of like if that's a reasonable price or not. I think one other shoe that you can compare the Aeroglide with, I think would be the Triumph 20. I feel like these are two shoes that uh, have similar kind of sensations to them. They're not the maxiest of the max cushion shoes, but they are really good for long runs and they're lively enough that they don't feel like big giant clunkers. I feel like these two shoes go head to head really nicely. Then the Triumph 20 still is not on sale, at least as far as where I'm seeing it here in the US. Uh, and that comes in right at 160. So they're going toe to toe. And I feel like that's a really good kind of comparison there. And the other shoe that we're going to compare it to if we're talking about max cushion road cruising miles is going to be the Bondi 8. I feel like this is another shoe that I think is kind of line up pretty well. If you're thinking about the one, you should probably consider the other. I feel like the Bondi 8 is a little bit on the more like extra side. There's more cushion, there's more padding, there's more foam, there's more width in terms of the footprint that you're landing on. So if you want kind of like everything pushed all the way up, dials turned all the way up as far as they go, then I think the Bondi 8 might be your better choice. But if you feel like the Bondi 8 is just a little bit too much for you, then I feel like the Aeroglide is gonna be able to give you a lot of kind of what you're looking for uh, without some of that extra stuff that you might not be wanting to carry around with you. And that shoe comes in at $165, so a little bit more, because it's a little bit extra. Uh, so I do think that the 160 ultimately for the Aeroglide is probably the right price. So those are my thoughts on the Aeroglide. I'm looking forward to logging a lot more easy road miles in this shoe because I have been having a really good time running in it. If you have any questions about any of the shoes that I've talked about today, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?